unbelievable. And you know what? Someone needs to do a demonstration what 15,000 PSI per square inch can do. And one of the professors that I work with, as he told me, water will move. Every PSI, one PSI will move water 2.2 feet. Do the math. Now, if you think this is not going to deviate, it is. And again, that's why they're exempt. Like I said last night, those guys can never answer that question. I said, why are you exempt? Why are you exempt? When I worked in the oil and gas industry as a salesman, they weren't exempt. If they muddied a stream, they got shut down. It was altogether different. I mean, I have a family where they were drilling a mile, not a mile, I'm sorry, uh, maybe half a mile away at least, or close to that proximity or a little more, up on a ridge, up on a hill. Elevation drop may have been <clears throat> a couple hundred feet. This fellow fought in the Korean War, super, super nice people. Um, proud of his garden. In his yard, he had circles of foam. I had this guy go public. He also had frac sand in his spigot. His neighbor had frac sand in his spigots and in his hot tub. In his, he showed me his uh, dishwasher and he pulled a, a glass out and he said, this is what was in my dishwasher. He said, the DEP said, that's just sand on the bottom, you know, the formation on the bottom of your well. Excuse me, sir, from the DEP. Well, first of all, you don't have your submersible pump all the way to the bottom of your well. It's extended up so many feet so you're not sucking the bottom. Duh. Also, the sand is white. We have no white sand formations in Pennsylvania that I'm aware of. And can you show it to me? Well, these are the kind of things that they'll tell these folks. But anyway, where those white circles of foam came up, the, ground, the grass was all dead. He watered his garden. Well, that did his garden in a couple days. It was all dead. His wife had rashes on her legs. She went to uh, the doctor for that, and uh, the doctor told her he had about four other a dermatologists, had four other, about four or five other patients had the same problems and didn't know why. He didn't know what it was. Then she thought she was having a heart attack. And then he was having a tough time walking, he said. Because what happens with the cattle, too, that's, that's another connect the dots, uh, neuropathy. They go, they, the, their hind quarters, of course, that's their strongest you know, area, they, they lose strength. And once they go down, they, they normally they don't get back up. That's the end of them. And Terry had several of them like that. Um, I just want to let people know that one reason we would love people to use the microphone is because there'll be other people watching this that really want to know and be educated. So it'd be really helpful if people don't mind uh, coming up here to use the microphone to ask their questions so that uh, both people live watching and then people who will be watching later can get the question, get the answer, and then that'll help them do the... I'm sure you've been informed that this is a mining area, and... No, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, it is. It was mined out long ago, and my question is about subsidence, and the earthquakes we're starting to hear so much about that are happening. Do you have any feedback about that, or is that an issue in Pennsylvania? Well, Youngstown, Ohio, which is just right over the border from us, yeah, they had the injection well there, and yeah, they were having earthquakes, and... Uh, the uh, local politician there, he, uh, he really stood up. And Ohio, Ohio's really fighting this hard too because now they're in Ohio and they're trying to really rip up Ohio with that U Utica shell. And uh, they try to play everything down and cover it up. They had, to, they had the earthquakes in Arkansas where the injection, or the injection wells were and they shut them down. They've had, they've had the issues um, in, I think, Oklahoma. They've had issues in Colorado. I mean, there's been issues, uh, the UK, supposedly, they had earthquakes over there when they fracked. You know, a number of the countries, like France, they, France has banned it. 
um, you know, Belgium, there's a number of them out there, I think Bulgaria. There's, this thing has gone global. And people are stepping up. Uh, in Canada, uh, who, who, they banned it up in Calgary. And they will not even allow a test well up there. I mean, there are people crying out. You've got guys that worked in the industry that are, t that, that, that basically, they're whistleblowers. They came forward. And they're talking about it. And they're all over the internet. And they'll explain the whole process and how the one guy was a driller and he lives up in Canada. And he was showing the whole diagram and how farmers, people would be coming to him and, or, you know, when they were out there drilling and, hey, what did you do to my water? My water's black. And uh, he's telling everybody, don't do this. It's, it's dangerous. And again, you got to go back to the exemptions. That's it. Why are you exempt? The liability is left upon you, the landowner, and you, the community. And where do the politicians get a lot of their money? Oil and gas. They get the donations from the big players. Most of the jobs, there were some local jobs created. That's, that's a given. Um, of course, you know, they're gonna, they, people do have to eat, so they go to the restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but most of the people that were on my property were from Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Wyoming. Uh, there were some local guys uh, doing some of the well pads. But it's not as many people as they want to promote. And the studies have been done on that also because they claimed 70,000, you know, 75,000 jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of those jobs are filled by, by industry people that have been working around it. And, and, and again, the one superintendent told me on a job, uh, the last well they drilled on my property, and this was the frack company, that he fired 14 guys off of that one job. It's, it's a revolving door, because I know a lot of the guys that, that, that work for the industry just for a short time and quit, for various reasons. So it is a revolving door. But, uh, and again, once they, they, they do their job and they develop that field, then they move on. And they go somewhere else and do the same thing. They've been doing this for years and years and years all around the world. And then they've had issues all around the world, but they keep it suppressed. When you start to dig into it and see all the lawsuits, just like right now with Brazil, I guess Brazil is suing the, uh, uh, the top 17 uh, uh, executives of, uh, I think, I read the story, I think it was Chevron. And they're, they're going after them for environmental crimes. And then I saw, I read the article about BP, that the first engineer is being held. He's in court for environmental crimes of that blowout that they had in the Gulf. And this is what needs to happen. These guys need to be charged. They need to be criminally charged because they're just, they're, they're, the destruction they're causing is incredible. Let me say again how much I appreciate, you almost sound like a Native American. I really appreciate what you're saying. It's very strong and very powerful. One of the things that we have to keep in mind that jobs, the idea of jobs, can no longer be used as a, uh, uh, a service trade-off for what's happening to the earth, the land, or the earth, land, water, and air. That's no longer any good. Because without those kinds of things, your jobs don't mean anything. Jobs are uh, irrelevant. And as we had said earlier, the town of Kingman, Arizona has just gone entirely um, wind energy. The whole town, they hired 1,400 new people to work there in two years, they're hiring 1,400 more. So it has been proven that these alternatives, and I think that we have to keep saying that, uh, pointing that out, that there are alternatives to all of this, because in America, in this system of things, money is the issue. And we have to almost have to have a trade-off. You know, stop drilling there, and here, you can help uh, build some, uh, uh, some uh, wind turbines. And you can help monitor those, and we pay you just as good as you will just if you're um, tearing up the earth, as if you're uh, uh, destroying the water. And they have been drilling in this part of the world for a long time here, a long time. And yes, there are people here. This is, uh, it's like a mafia, if you will. 
if, uh, of people who are taking money in this part of the world. And yes, we all know who they are. We all know, and a number of us, uh, most of us keep our mouths shut because this part of the world is so uh, intimately tied with one another between our native communities and that native ancestry runs out into the mainstream. And people are connected with each other down in here. And they don't want to go against the grain of mining or, or uh, fracking or, or whatever it may be because it's going to be money. What they don't get in their heads, like this man is saying, that, that no matter what happens, if you don't have that water and you don't have that air to breathe and the coal mine dust down here, we have the second highest rate of respiratory disease in North America, right here. Of all the coal mine country that exists in the world, right here, uh, all the way around to Paducah, look on the internet, where we have the highest, and it comes from the coal dust. This uh, fracking thing is uh, going to destroy water. There's no question about it. And the water wells, the reason that this man, uh, somebody you spoke of earlier had said that they'd been doing it a long time and nothing had happened, nobody's reported it. Nobody's reported the poisoning of wells. Those wells that he's talking about have been poisoned. Well, I don't know that they all have because I haven't checked them all. But those wells have been poisoned from the fracking. And we have to keep in mind, don't let anyone use that thing, well, you don't have to put milk and bread on the table for my kids. That's irrelevant. To, uh, the, we're at the stage of life now where that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Your jobs are irrelevant. If you don't have water, if you don't have air, and you don't have land to plant in, your jobs are irrelevant. You, that connection has to be made in, the head, in these thick heads. You don't have water. You don't have a uh, place to plant. You don't have uh, uh, air to breathe. You don't have a job either. Well, that's one thing. They are affecting the whole ecosystem. That's what's happening. Every bit of it. And when you do your homework and research, it's, I mean, they, they are, they're, they're disturbing everything that's out there. And you don't know what you're eating or what you're drinking. You know, the cows, you know, you've got the dairy cattle. These streams are getting contaminated. All the small streams, uh, all the runoff that comes off of these wells in the surface water, storm runoff, you know, we were, we were testing uh, uh, some of the streams. We were testing water wells because we knew the DEP wasn't doing their job. And we found acrylonitrile in a lot of the water wells. This is used to manufacture plastic. We don't have any pla uh, plastic manufacturers uh, in, in Hickory, Pennsylvania. They use it in the process. And it's like a gel, supposedly, from what I understand. And it, it, it'll suspend the sand. This stuff will ooze up into the fissures and cracks suspends the sand, they flush it out with some other types of chemicals, sand stays, and this stuff goes into, you know, somebody's water. And we found it in like, I don't know, 12 or 14. Of course, you know, again, the chain of custody, none of this would ever hold up in court, but these were the things that we were finding because we had to grab the bull by the horns because that's what, that's what happens. The regulatory agencies, you know, was not stepping up to the plate. And I know one thing, uh, you know, a lady told me, a, a Native American Indian told me one day that I just happened to meet. Just, and I forget where the heck I was. But anyhow, we just started talking. And she was, talk, she was upset about the, the BP spill. And she said, you know, what has happened, if I can remember this correctly, um, she said the earth, let's see, your body is, uh, uh, you know, is part of the earth or, or like the earth where your bones are, or let's see, your bones are the rocks of the earth. And she said the, the skin is the shell of the earth and the veins are the water of the earth. And right now when that spill was occurring at that time, she said we have just severed the artery of the earth. And boy, that just kind of, you know, that, that zinged me. Because it made sense. And we are, and, and if you follow what's happened down there, I love their BP's commercials. Oh, come on down, you know. They, you know but when you see who it's paid by, BP, come on down, everything's great. No, it's not great. And you, you're starting to see the after effect of the fish. Come on. Everything that, that, that they did, the dispersants that they dumped in the ocean, that that's not going to affect the ocean? Give me a break. 